Okay, it's time to go ahead and take the assets that I've built in Adobe Illustrator, put them into Adobe Animate so I can start my simple scrolling uh, GIF. So I'm in Adobe Illustrator and I've got two files. My background, I made a jungle, and my tiger, that's gonna be my character. So if you look at my character, you can see I've got all my different layers on. I can turn on and off the head or a specific leg or the tail because later I wanna be able to move those. So I've got them as independent layers and groups. But for now, I want all of them turned on, all visible so I can see my whole character all at once. Um, I'll go ahead and export this now as a PNG. Same thing with my jungle. Now I've got in my jungle, I've got different layers. I've got a foreground, I've got a middle ground, I've got a background. Um, and you'll notice that if I look, I've got different areas that go off the edge of the artboard um, and that's okay. Um, in fact, that's a good thing for where we're gonna go later. For now, don't worry about it, but it's okay if stuff goes off the edge. So I'm gonna go up, it's time to export these as PNGs. So I'll go to file, export, export as. Now I can call this background or it's a jungle, so I can call it whatever I want. I'll call it jungle. Um, it's going to my desktop, um, PNG, and I'm gonna actually click this box that says use artboards. Now by clicking that, when I hit export, all of this stuff that goes outside of my rectangle, it's actually gonna get cut off in the PNG. It'll still be fine. It's here in my AI file, it's saved, it's fine. It's not going anywhere permanently but my PNG will not have this extra stuff. And that's okay for the simple version that we're making now. So hit export, high for 300 PPI, transparent background is good. Okay. And it's, you know, I've done this before. So that's everything. I'm gonna do that for my jungle. I'm gonna do that for my tiger. And you can see now that I've got a PNG of my jungle, a PNG of my tiger up here. Okay, so now I'm able to start dumping this stuff into Adobe Animate. I'm gonna go into Adobe Animate and when it's open, go to File, New, or I could always hit Create New. Same, same process, so I hit Create New. Both will take me to this pop-up. Now for this pop-up, there's a couple things that I want. I want this to be, sorry, so I want this to be an action script 3.0, that's good. Uh, for my frame rate, I want it to be 24 frames per second. So I'm gonna change my frame rate to 24. For my width, um, I'm going to do something a little bit smaller. These are pretty tiny, so I can go ahead um, and, you know, standard is getting me closer, but it's still a little bit bigger than I need. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to 550 for the width and 400 for the height. And then again, that of course changed my frame rate back, so I need to change that back to 24. Action Trip 3.0. So these are the settings I need: 550. 400, 24, Ashton Script 3.0, and I can hit Create. Now, when I've created that in Adobe Animate, here is my new document. This is uh, the stage. In Illustrator, we would call this the artboard, but here it's called the stage. So I've got my stage. I've got all my tools here on the left-hand side. I've got my properties over here, and down at the bottom, I've got my timeline, and we've explored this a little bit before. So I'm going to go ahead and do a few things. First things first, I'm going to go over into my library. Now, right now, I don't have anything in my library. It's empty. So I can go ahead and I can actually um, import my PNGs into my library. So I'm going to take the tiger and I'm going to come and drag it into my library. You'll get the plus sign and then I release with my mouse. And then it's going to import that PNG in my library. I'm going to do the same thing with my jungle. I'm going to drag it in, let it go. It's imported now, and that's great. I'm also gonna go into my layers. So right now I've got one layer. I really want two layers. One layer will have my jungle on it. One layer will have my tiger on it. So I can add the plus layer button. So now I've got two layers. Now for my top layer, let's rename that. And I'm gonna rename that character. And my second layer, the one below, I'm gonna label that background, great. So now I know my character goes on my front layer, my background layer is where, well, my background is gonna go. And that's gonna be really important. The other thing you'll notice is I can see what frame one, two, three, four, et cetera, looks like. I want a 10 second animation. And I said 240 frames, uh, or 24, sorry, frames per second. So the math means I really need to make an animation that lasts for 240 frames, but this only shows me up to frame 10. So I'm just gonna use my little uh, sort of timeline view. I can scroll this down, 
I'm going to keep scrolling. I scroll basically until I can get it to about 240. It gets me pretty close. Maybe if I expand this a little bit. There we go. See, now I can see all the way up to 280 something. So um, so this, I can, I can toggle this around a little bit and get it where I want it so that I can see everything I need to see. But there we go. That gets me to frame 240. That's going to be important in a little bit. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and I've got my uh, character. I'm going to do this on my character layer. So on my top layer, which is label character in frame one, I'm going to click on frame one. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to bring my character, my tiger in from my library. So I click and I drag it in, place it on my stage. Whoa, that is a really big tiger. That's okay. So it's there in frame one. It's too big. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to click on my second tool. That's my free transform tool. And I can drag it down. Now I got to be careful. I just squashed it and that's no good. So command Z to go back to my original, hold down your shift key so that you scale it in proportion. And I want it to fit pretty well on my stage. So I can go in, I can command zero. Actually, let me get command plus. I forgot. Animate works a little bit differently. It doesn't like to do that. Um, and I can see where my tiger is going to be down here. And I'm going to have my tiger. Now, yours, your character might be a little different. You might need to put it here in the center. Um, it should be pretty big and occupy a good amount of the stage. I'm going to put mine slightly off the edge because I actually was lazy. I didn't make feet. Cause I was like, when my finished animation is done, you're not going to see his, his feet. So, um, you know, I have to position this a little bit. I'm going to size them up just a touch, but I want my feet to be off the edge. So that might make sense for you. Um, or if we can see your full character, that's fine as well. Uh, it just needs to make sense. So there, I got my tiger. Now my tiger is there in frame one, but if I go to frame two, uh, you know, I just got a keyframe and it's just going to sit there in frame one. Um, and that's fine. So I've got this. Um, I'm going to go in. I got frame one. If I go all the way down now to frame 240 and it should be a gray one because it's an interval frame. And I do the same thing. I just hit insert keyframe. Boom. Now it assumes, oh, you want the tiger in frame 240 as well? So it's going to fill in. So I've got a keyframe here. You can see it's filled in a keyframe at the end, and then you can see it's got these little interval tick marks. So basically it's saying no matter where I am in my animation from frame one to frame 240, my tiger is sitting in the animation. And that's a good thing. So if I hit play, my tiger's there all the time. Now nothing's happening because nothing's moving. It's just parked there, sitting all the time. So now we need to make this a little bit more exciting. I can go ahead and let's do this. Next to character, I'm going to turn my, uh, I clicked on the little eyeball to turn it to off. It's still there. I'm just turning it off for a moment. I'm going to go into my background layer. I'm going to click on frame one. And this time I'm going to drag in my jungle. Whoa, again, really, really big. So I can zoom out. Um, and again, I can go to free transform, hold down shift, and I can scale this down. So it's going to fit on my stage. Now, one thing I have noticed is you got to kind of zoom in then a little bit to make sure it truly fills your stage. You don't want to do, you don't want to make it too small. There we go. I can nudge it down with my arrow keys. Cool. So it's just slightly off and I'm ready to go. So I've resized it so it covers up the stage without too much off to the side. Now, again, I don't have anything off the edge because remember I clicked use artboards when I exported this PNG um, and that was an issue. So I need to think, okay, depends, since my tiger is pointed it's going from, it's kind of traveling to the left. I'm going to drag this all the way over. But I'm going to get this justified to the leftmost position on my stage. Cool. So that's where it is in frame one. Now, if I go here to frame 240 on my background layer in the timeline and I insert a keyframe, great. Now it's going to say great. It assumes I also want to be there all the way to two to frame 240. So then I can go ahead, I can turn my tiger back on. I can start at frame one and I can play my animation. Uh, nothing's happening, right? Exactly, because my positions haven't changed. So I've got my assets, but they're in the exact same spot. So it just looks frozen. That was pointless and that's okay. So 
frame one, we want our animation here, our background. When I go to my background frame 240, I actually want to move my background. And I'm going to take it all the way to the other side and get it close. That's close enough. I mean, you can get it right on if you really want to. But um, there we go. That's frame 240. Now what's going to happen if I play my animation from frame one is it's going to play. But again, nothing's going to happen because it's got this keyframe that says hold it there until I get to the very last frame of my entire animation. And then suddenly it's going to jump to the end. Uh, that doesn't really do very much. So here's what I need to do. I want my background to gradually move from position one to this new position in frame 240. How do I do that on my background layer? I'm going to click inside or right click in the middle, just somewhere in between frame one and 240 on that layer. And I'm going to hit all the way at the top of my pop up. I'm going to hit where it says create classic tween. The selected frames cannot be tweened. It's going to say it can't do a thing. That's fine. Yes, I want to convert it. So I'm going to hit OK. And now check out what that just did. It now said, oh, you want to tween it. You want to fill in this position to this position and animate just did it for me. So what that now means is it's basically going to slide my background across. So if I hit play, now my background slides across between frames one and frames 240, which is really, really cool. So if I need to know how that looked, I can go ahead. Uh, there's a couple different ways I can do this. If I go up to the top right hand corner of my screen, there's a test movie button. So I can click on that. It's going to export it and it's going to show me that's what my animation looks like. I'm realizing now that orange on an orange background, not my greatest call. Um, I don't have great contrast. So I need to do some adjustments on my colors um, and clean this up and do a way that's going to work better. Um, and my size and my scale and all that are kind of off, but that's okay. I'm not worried about it. I will deal with that later, but I've got this nice little scrolling GIF. Okay. I'm happy. Well, it's not a GIF yet. It will be soon. So what I can do to make this into a GIF is I can go up to file and I can go down to export and I can go over and what do you know? There's an export animated GIF is my fifth option. So click on that. When you click on export animated GIF, it'll take you to a whole new pop-up window. And there's a lot of options. We're not going to get into all of them because it gets a little crazy. You might see some amount of pixelation up here um, because it, it really can only have um, like the 256 colors. So it kind of has to assume and, and sort of do some stuff to pick to the pixels. Don't worry about that. I'm going to name this. Um, well, no, I want this to be unnamed. So there we go. It's unnamed. I can, I'll do that part later. Um, all of my stuff is good um, for diffusion and all these things for dither. Yes. Diffusion, diffusion is good. Um, I like a dither, so I'm just going to leave it alone. Diffusion is on. I'm happy. Um, this is all good. Now, sometimes you might have a transparent box, in which case we'll get rid of that transparent box because we don't really want transparency. I don't have any transparency because I don't have any white on here, but if you need to click on a color and get rid of it, um, I can show you how to do that in class. So it's pretty much ready to go. I don't need to change any of these settings basically. So I'm going to hit save. This is where I can title it. So I'm just going to call this simple. And then my last name, McKay, because I'm a simple guy. I'm going to put this on my desktop and for file format, it's GIF save. Great. Hooray. I'm very, very happy. Um, and now I should have a GIF right here. Now, here's the thing that's going to be confusing. If you take this GIF and you double click on it, it's going to give you this weird preview mode. And it's basically saying, here's your GIF. And it's now going to show you there are actually 240 different frames. It is going to display this as 240 different pictures. I don't need that. So exit out. But if I make a plus tab on my browser window in Chrome and I simply drag it in, it'll play my GIF. So it works. Um, preview on the Mac just doesn't like to do it. So what I need to do then is submit that right here into Schoology. Um, submit the GIF and you are good to go.